And let's start it off with a lovely lady who was none other. Well, let's face it. She was Black Siren. She was also Black Canary. But she was Laurel Lance. Ladies and gentlemen, Katie Cassidy. What's up? How are you? (laughs) Hi, how's it going? It's good to see you again. You and I have done regular cons. I wonder if the energy from the room can be translated to the virtual screen. I mean, that's what I just sort of felt like as I was like imagining I was, you know, running out on stage being like, hi, what's up, you guys? Um, oh, well, that, that's Carlos's tail. Um, apologize for that. Um, it, this is interesting, you know? I, I think it's actually really great, though, to, to be able to during this time in the crazy world to be able to, you know, connect with fans and, and talk to you guys. Connect yeah, with and take a couple of minutes and just talk about a show that everybody has such a passion for. Uh, no secret uh, of that. All right, let's get someone else is called Black Canary. And if you didn't see Arrow, you're like eight seasons behind because there's a whole storyline <laughs> behind the whole thing. She was Dinah Drake. Uh, she is the great Juliana Harkavy. Juliana, welcome. What's up, everybody? <laughs> hey, Katie. And how are you? How how is how has quarantine been treating you? These I can't believe this. In my notes, I had three months. Then I crossed it out. It's four months. Now we're on five months. How have the five months been? Well, I am very very blessed to say that I have you know I am nobody in my family has been uh, directly impacted in terms of their health. Um, so I've actually been enjoying it. It's given me a chance to um, just kind of go inward and and garden and be quiet and and enjoy time at home. So I really liked it, and I, I enjoy doing things like this as well. It's kind of innovative and cool and uh, neat to do cons online. Yeah, very forward thinking. No question about it. All right, let's bring in uh, some others and uh, including. All right. Now, if you didn't know, again, if if spoilers, because let's say you you have a lot to catch up on if you didn't know. But Felicity and Oliver had a kid and then we saw the kid all grown up. And William is here. Ben Lewis, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> Handsome. <laughs> Good to see you guys. I haven't seen you in ages. I miss you. I miss you too. <laughs> and your last time on screen together, I think, was all together, correct? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Too long ago. No, I know. That's too long true. ago. <laughs> that was not again. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. My last episode was the, yeah, I wasn't in the finale. So that my last episode was the backdoor pilot. That's true. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm sure that's not going to come up during the chat. I'm, I'm sure that, that, that I'm question. Sure no one has questions about oh. that. I don't. <laughs> that's just get it out of the way early, early. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's welcome in the daughter of Raish Al Ghul, the great Nissa Al Ghul, Katrina Law. <laughs> Yay! It was a really weird looking high. It's like just forearms and hands. As long this as it wasn't a really was weird looking intro, that, that I, I'm, I'm covered. That we're, yeah. we're good. <laughs> Way to be smooth. <laughs> Tell us about your quarantine situation. Have you been uh, Have you been okay? Um, I've personally been fine. My family has been really great. Uh, it's It's definitely been uh, a good time to just kind of chill and reflect and kind of do some self work. That being said, I have had several friends who have been severely ill, um, hospitalized. I have a couple in the hospital right now. So please, please, please wear a mask. This is no joke. People are sick. And then even when they get better, it's still like one of them, actually two of them, when it first started, came back from Europe and they got sick from the flight and they were in quarantine in late March. And to this day, they're still not feeling well. So technically they're better, but they're not feeling well. Please wear a mask. This is serious. Stay healthy. If you are healthy, enjoy it because it's a blessing. So my quarantine has been good. There's not so much. Yeah. And, and we're, you know, we have viewers all over the world and every person has their own story like that, you know, because even all the people in America, you know, if you're in one part of America, you're in a hot spot. If you're not, you're in a place that's, not you know it's not that much so everybody has a different situation there's no no question about it 
Is it too early to make a COVID joke, though? Can we do like lighthearted COVID jokes? Because I wonder if COVID went all the way to Leon Yu. Who can we ask? Let's ask Kelly who? <laughs> Kelly who? Oh, wait. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon? <laughs> we know you're like the awesome intro. <laughs> I'm tapping. I'm tapping. Hold on. Kelly. 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 Is it not working? Way, Kelly and I were an acting class together 100 years there ago. There we go. Really? Kelly, Kelly has a TP. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> TP? Hi! So good, Kelly. Welcome. I Yay. just heard a, a big rumor. You were in acting class with Katie Cassidy. What was that like? Did you yeah. Know? Oh, yeah. Do you know that? No, you just it said was, it, though, but I was listening. I, I'm, just, I'm a diehard fan of her. She just doesn't maybe know that. You are <laughs> too sweet. She's just saying that right now. She's know, just so sweet. Cool. She knows about it. Told her. <laughs> too, too bad I only do good work in acting class and not a film. <laughs> <laughs> and that voice, that's such a distinct voice. I remember hearing it like um, was, uh, early on after we shot the pilot, I think, I forget what episode, but I heard your voice in the trailer and I was like, <gasps> I remember oh, this. Oh. You must have heard my laugh. <laughs> I have a very powerful, I have a canary <laughs> laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can blow people's heads off with my laugh. That's how loud I am. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. And I have to imagine that when you came on to the scene later in the series and you met uh -huh. all these people who had known each other for so many years, that must have been an interesting experience trying to kind of merge in with these because they all seemed like they're thick as thieves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky because the first person I ever worked with on the show was Colton, uh, who I actually knew socially like a tiny bit. So he was really helpful in sort of like, you know, right. bringing me into the fold and I think making me feel comfortable. And then practically, I think in my second or third episode, I got to work with Juliana, who's just like yeah. the warmest, sweetest person. And, um, and Katie, I feel like we didn't work together until a little bit later on, but she's just the best. I mean, I feel like we really started working together like after you even directed um, that episode. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because that was before we went back in time and that's when we had most of our stuff. Right. I think that the directing was, that was the most, the first, like the most we had worked together was one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, again, by the way, and all of you, um, <laughs> didn't direct you, hopefully one day I will get to. But. That was one of my favorite, one of my favorite episodes for sure. Um, but anyway, it's a, I mean, it's a very warm group. And then Katrina, um, I only met really on another uh, virtual panel that we did earlier in quarantine. And then Kelly oh. and I have never met, right, Kelly? Right? No, we haven't. Yeah. So it's Not nice to meet you now. Nice yes, to meet you. Now. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so, son. <laughs> Sorry. Well, yes, I have to correct you. I have to correct you. Sometimes, and you're like, oh wait, oh yeah, but <laughs> didn't interact, and they're like, oh yeah, I was on your show. <laughs> I have to I have to correct you though, Seth, because William is not technically uh, Oliver and Felicity's it's son. He is right. he is Oliver. No, no, no. Oliver's no, son. No. Oh, that's right. Oliver's son Oliver from your other Samantha, lady. You're right. You're right. Great right. Samantha Catherine Samantha. McNamara's daughter is. is that's, thank you. That's, that's correct. correct. And that I, did correct. A, I just want to say that now. I, I, less I, I, the I, fans I, think I don't know. Juliana and I because she and I went head to head. What was it? TV Guide? When they asked us all these questions, Jules? Oh, yeah. We didn't know a single answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for pointing that out. <laughs> Katie knew more than me, to be fair. <laughs> right, it's a lot of story to keep straight for eight years. It is. There's oh a lot of facts, a lot of, you know. And then I feel like when you come on the show as a newbie, people expect you to know the answer to every question. And you're like, I've never even heard of that character. So you just make it. No, and my, all my new cast members who I joined with made me look really bad because Kat McNair watched every episode. Oh, Kat, uh, yeah. watched every oh, episode. She would watch every episode. <laughs> I did Would you not. think, Kat? She would watch every episode. She is a go-getter. Yeah, she's like, she. that's true. That made me realize that maybe I'm, I was just unprepared and irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel terrible you human being. Like, yeah. I'm with you, Juliana. That's so funny. <laughs> I don't as even long as you have mostly movie. underachievers, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so funny. Um, Katie, in the, in the very beginning of the show, um, you know, people knew the Green Arrow comic book. 
and they knew Black Canary and they knew Dinah Drake. But you were Laurel and you had to establish your own person there. How much did you know about the legacy of the character and just the idea that this was from a mythos that had been around for a long time versus really just blazing your own path? Um, well, I definitely was uh, very well, you know, made sure I was well prepared in terms of um, knowing the comic book because, I mean, as we know, comic book fans are the best fans in the world and they are extremely loyal, but it, that's also why it's so important. You know, it was so important to me that I, I knew, you know, as much as I possibly could about the comic book and, and being true to the origin of that story, given, you know, the scripts and the story that, that the writers were, were, you know, where they were headed, it was a fine balance to, to, to you know really give give it give it to the comic book and, and play that level but then also you know balancing the two between they didn't always stick to the comic book story in our in our in our show but that's just right. television and you know um so it was it was definitely fine balance but i made sure i was i was well schooled especially when my character went through everything her journey i find <laughs> sort of what her that my character was doing in terms of when I transformed, you know, after Laurel hit rock bottom and then coming back up and learning to what it is like to be a hero and, and, you know, training and doing all that. So I tried to live as much of it as I possibly could. Um, but definitely learned along the way, uh, as the character learned, I didn't, I did not want to jump ahead because I feel like that would always confuse me. I tried to stay sort of like what I felt like the character would know. That's what I would know. But and then, you know, and a little salt and pepper of the co the comic. Yeah. You know. But then Juliana, when you came in and they and you figure out that you're gonna be Black Canary, and Katie had just done a whole run as Black Canary, and just taking over that and knowing that no matter what you were going to do, you were going to be compared you know, favorably, unfavorably, whatever it was, everyone was gonna have an opinion on your role just at the same time, just for being there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I was scared, poopless. <laughs> I was, I was like, what? I didn't Hold know. On, they're transcribing it in the studio. They just <laughs> p o o p l e s s. It was, um, it was a big. I didn't know that I was gonna play Black Canary until I basically like got to Canada. They they kept it a secret, and uh, and then I did a lot of homework, and I saw Katie's work, which I loved. And as soon as I started. What, well, not as soon as I started watching you, Katie, but like as soon as I realized that it was a character who already existed, I got anxious. So I very quickly dropped the need or the idea that it needed to be anything like Katie's character, which ended up working for both of us so beautifully in the future when she comes back and we were able to have these two dynamics like that were going. Um, so we were similar but different. And um, yeah, it was a lot of pressure, but it was it was an honor. I mean, I wish that, you know, Katie had been there from day one that I was there. But you came like it was only maybe like 10 episodes that I did without Katie. So it ended up working out really well. And by the way, like that's why it worked and why it's so cool. Yeah. Cause you were it's so smart. That's so smart to like bring your own, you know, you don't ever want to obviously mimic anybody's work, but to sort of take your, make it your own, which is why everybody I think took well to it and liked it. Cause like, yeah. you know, you're super professional and you were super, um, you had a, your own vision and own take on it, which was really cool to watch. And it, it, yeah, it was really, it's, you're awesome. Yeah. I, have, I fangirl over Katie still. All right. <laughs> Nice. I just want to throw in there that um, so do a lot of people in the chat. Surprisingly, <laughs> <laughs> I want to throw in there that um, it's it's not as rare as as you would think, but it is an unusual circumstance to have a cast with so many women mm. in it who are who play strong, strong, dynamic female characters and get along offset. Like it is right. one of the most mm. beautiful sets that I've ever been on. The cast gets along so well. They're so supportive. Um, whenever I was there, I never witnessed any animosity between women taking over other women's roles or like the perceived whatever. And it was just something but supportive. Okay, you do this, you do that. I'm going to do this and we're going to support each other. And 
it's, I think it's just a testament to how wonderful our female cast is. Our male cast is great. Ben, you're wonderful. But, <laughs> but he's like, he's like, really I'm still in the room. <laughs> but there really is something truly special about the women in the Arrowverse. They, I mean, Kelly is kind of terrible, but you know, whatever. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> I know. I, feel, I was an acting class in here. <laughs> <laughs> In getting an acting class, I was like, this girl is a genius. Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> I was hard to watch. <laughs> and I, so, and I feel like we feel like this about each other. We all play a role and we're a team, you know, doing something. And we got to take one for the team. And we've all sort of, you know, it's exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. supporting each other you know it's cool that julian it's like a different you know you sort of just have to like go with it to support the story yeah well, it's, it's such a saga and katrina just to, to play off what you were saying you come in and it's the same thing with legacy i mean people in the in the superhero world knew about Talia. They didn't know Nyssa. So you have a chance to carve your own niche in a character that now is become a huge part of the legacy of this show because of the key parts of Oliver's journey, but also your journey in this, in this whole run that they had and coming back at the end was, was brilliant in the final season. I was so happy to be coming back for the finale. I didn't think it was going to be able to happen because I was working wow. on Hawaii Five-0 and the schedules were just gnarly and trying to get from Hawaii to Vancouver was a logistical nightmare, but um, it just felt so good to be there. And, and to be honest, I think with Nissa, I didn't have the pressure that Katie and Juliana had. Like I actually got off scot-free because nobody heard of Nissa. Anybody who said they heard of Nissa were just lying. So (laughs) we basically got to do whatever we wanted. And, you know, Denny O'Neill created such a great character with Rachel Gould and and everything. And, you know, unfortunately he just passed away uh, recently as all the fandom knows, but, um, the world that he created and getting to play into that world and with Greg Rucka and everybody who created Nyssa, you know, they didn't mind that the Arrow writers took freedom with uh, taking her in a di- different direction than the comics that she was in. And then they didn't mind that we gave her a British accent and that we altered her sexuality from what she was in the original comic books. And everybody just was like, cool. Yeah, do what you want. seems cool. We love it. So <laughs> there wasn't cool. a Bible that I needed to follow that, that, um, they needed to follow for Black Canary. So, you know, the any kind of feedback was usually usually just like, oh, I love what you're doing with the characters. I've never heard of her before. So um, my job was a lot less stressful. <laughs> <laughs> I am, uh, I'm getting overwhelmed with questions. So let's get to the, the, the hard journalism questions first and we'll get those out of the way. The first one is for Katrina. The only question I need answered in this panel is Sorry. what is the unicorn next to Katrina law called? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we actually have it named. <laughs> Carla. Her, him, the, it, they? I, don't, I don't know what her pro, its pronoun is. So <laughs> I haven't decided anything because this is actually my daughter. So she hasn't told me yet, but I'm sure one day she will. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe somebody else can name her. Is. Wait, how old is she now? She's how just a year and a half. Oh, oh my god, already, dude! She just learned how she can open cabinets. What? She can like do like the sliding doors. She can now like go into the fridge and get her own ice cubes. It's uh oh. Oh my god! Is yeah. she is she speaking full sentences? Can she name this unicorn? She no, not really. I mean, she's or the end of the panel. Can sure. she name this unicorn? <laughs> yeah, she's like speaking two languages because her main language is Mandarin, but then she's also kind of speaking English. So I think there's, I think when, I think there's a little bit of hesitancy, has a hesitancy, hesitancy for her to speak because I think she's kind of going, which language do I speak in? Mm-hmm. But her vocabulary is quite large, but it's not in the sentence form yet. Oh, so, so wait, why Mandarin? Uh, because what I speak. Oh, wait, why did I not know that? <laughs> Now, how did 
You have been my nemesis. You want we can mute our microphone. You are like the other agent, and I only worked whenever you weren't working. Because (laughs) oh, that is so not true. It is true. I had to wait until you were hired on something until they were like, "All right, fine, we'll cast Trina." You're like you're like fifteen years younger than me, or more even. You're not even. You're Asian. You don't crack. (laughs) You really don't. No raisin. People still think you're 12. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Only my maturity level. <laughs> Someone on Twitch clip that. Just clip that, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, I have. I don't know how I'm going to top this. Uh, I have lots of questions. Some are for the whole group, and some are for specific people. And I'm just going to sift through them. Uh, Josh writes and says, "What's next for Katie?" And then there's the question that we have been asked. I think. 3,000 times. What can any of you tell us about the spinoff? Here's kind of like, I, I, what can you tell us about the spinoff? <laughs> All I know is I did a podcast with Catherine McNamara and she said, ask you guys. Yeah. Oh. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. <laughs> I think everything is just on hold right now. Like we're just, we're waiting and we're seeing how things evolve and change and yeah. <laughs> um, I'm actually writing a pilot right now, which I can't really get into details about it yet. It's a good thing you told us then. What are you doing? I'm just letting you know. <laughs> uh, it's based off a book, and I will let you guys know at some point. Wow. Yeah. It's a what? It's based off a book. I can't say no. I'm excited. There was something else after that. Uh huh. No, it's based off a book, and I'll let you guys know when I'm. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be on social media. Can you tell us the genre? Uh, It's like, uh, yeah, it's action, drama, thriller. Wow. That's just about everything but horror. (laughs) (laughs) Horror and comedy. Okay, sorry. That's awesome. Just say say the word. I, I'll I'll read more. Uh, Liz Liz writes Kelly, my daughters love Tangled the series, and Adira is one of their favorite characters. Oh. Would you ever consider playing Adira in a live action Tangled? That would be amazing special. That effect. would be super fun. You know, I mean, Adira's such a fun character to play. She's like, you know, super rough and tomboyish and and um, and yeah, she you know, she's a warrior. She's a warrior. So, yeah, that's that's right down my alley. I love although I'm getting a little too old for that now. (laughs) I I have to rely on my stunt people. (laughs) No, but last five minutes ago, I heard something that says you don't do something. So that's all I can say. I don't do what? What? Something about cracking. That's all I can say. Oh, (laughs) I'm like (laughs) tiptoeing. Question for Ben. Question for Ben. Were you sad when you learned that Kat was going to be in the crossover and get to see Oliver's death and William wasn't? Uh, yeah, I guess I was, I guess I was. Cause it just meant that I was sort of like my time on the show was, I was done sooner, although <laughs> in theory, but then the scene, uh, towards the end of the backdoor pilot where, uh, sh- I am kidnapped for like the 50th time and, um, cat <laughs> is, uh, knocked out <laughs> the dart. Um, that actually was, we shot, after the finale had been shot because they didn't yet have the monument of Steven built. (laughs) So we had to like, that was, I think maybe the second last scene of the entire series that was filmed. So I ended up sort of sticking around to the end um, anyway, but yeah, I guess so. I mean, the way that sort of um, I was with, I was okay with it because of the way that um, it worked out with the cliffhanger of the, the crossover. I was like, with this cliffhanger, I'm like, if this spinoff happens, there's no way they can't bring me back. So I was happy with that. Point. Yeah. Uh, just to, just, just a, a second, and I, I'll speak for all the fans. Mm-hmm. That crossover was something else. 
I mean, you guys had done crossovers before, but that one was wild. Wait a second. I just realized you're talking about the crossover and not the finale, which I was also not in. Um, <laughs> I was, I'm so sorry. I was speaking Correct. about the finale that I wasn't in, not the crossover, which I was also not in. <laughs> Never mind. Forget it. Okay. Uh, this is um, uh, just Kim. I think it's just Kim. Uh, I only watched Arrow during quarantine and it helped me through the first few months. Was glad there were so many episodes, but sad I only got into it so late. That's the beauty of these streaming services. People are finding shows that they'd never seen when it was in first run. And I would imagine Arrow's shelf life is keep going. You, you must have people tweeting at you guys saying they just saw you. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, it's cool. It kind of, I feel like it, it's timeless because there were so many episodes and it, it was on for so many years and now it's on streaming. So you could have started at the beginning or if you're starting now, I would say that's actually a good thing because you get the advantage of having it new. Whereas, you know, many people who started from the beginning feel like they're losing something at the moment, you know, or when we, when we wrap. So um, no, it's awesome. It's, it's cool to start at any time. Yeah. And especially a show like this with what I also, I really lo loved, always loved about this show is like, I felt like, like it brought families together in front of, mm. not in front of a TV, but at least it, what, when we first, you know, the pilot came out season one, I felt like there wasn't a lot of connection with families and I felt like it brought people back together. And that's sort of with what's going on in this time right now, in this really difficult time, I think it's, it's a cool story to watch and follow. And, you know, when you are with your loved ones, you know, cause there's a lot of not only, yeah, there's this heightened action, um, Oliver Queen, you know, the mythology story. And, but then there's also family story and grounding and there was a lot of heart to the show. So I think it's a, it's a good watch during this time. Yeah. I just think it's cool that they still call it the Arrowverse. Like even next year, like it's it. If they if they do anything involving those shows, all those shows are going to say they take place in the Arrowverse. Like, the, so cool. it, 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 it'll and it'll go on. I mean, look, these shows are super successful. It's going to go on for a really long time. I think one of the coolest things about um, the Arrowverse, and specifically Arrow, uh, it created this worldwide family like katie was saying so not only did it bring families together because when we would do conventions families would say oh we watch it together or we you know i wait till you know blah 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 and then we dvr it together but through the conventions that we've done together as a cast for so many years like we've literally held the children the you know they uh, the, the babies of the people who are watching us and we've watched their kids grow with them and when they come and they see us at conventions year after year you're kind of like oh wait what are you doing in school this year? What sports are you playing? Or like, look, this is my second or third child now. And it's just a really cool fan base to be a part of. And it's so loving and so supportive. And literally you just see the same people all around the world over and over again, and then watching them interact online. It's, it's just a really cool um, universe to be a part of. It's amazing. Amazing. Uh, Jeannie writes and says, um, Arrow was such an emotionally charged series with very complex characters. What did you personally take away from your experience on Arrow? I guess we can go around the room. That was a great answer. Let's go to the next question. <laughs> I have to say that when I, I think when I first got cast on the show, I was a little bit intimidated. I think I felt like it wasn't necessarily a genre that I necessarily fit in or the way that I see myself. And so I think what was really great is how I was able to bring so much of myself to the character of William and still have it be embraced, you know? And, and I think um, show to the fan base, I've said this before, but show to the fan base and also show to myself, I guess, that there are different ways to, um, be heroic. You know what I mean? You don't necessarily have to be the most, um, <laughs> coordinated in my case, or like <laughs> physically dominating or, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of different ways to, um, contribute to making the world a better place. And I think that, um, I think that Felicity, the character, the, the character Felicity was a really great model of that. And I think I was really lucky, um, to 
sort of take on that, take up that mantle as well. And Katie, you saw Felicity's evolution because when she was first cast on the show, she wasn't supposed to be more than a, a bit part. And by the time Katrina or Juliana got to the show and definitely by, for Ben, you know, she was a, she was, she was a mainstay and she was a focal point of the storyline. Uh, you know what? It's, it's interesting, but it's so smart. Again, I think it's really smart. I remember her coming on as, I, I don't know, it, it might've been a guest star or co-star. I, I don't remember, but she was only supposed to be there for one episode and that character, but she brought such a life and lightness and presence mm -hmm. that our show needed. It, we needed that, like some sort of, you know, lightness. Brevity. Yeah. There was a lot of heaviness going on. Um, and, drama and it, it, was, it was just like refreshing and i remember when she came like she made steven smile and you didn't ever see smile or, or all of her smiles <laughs> nice <laughs> chair uh, and she it was so cool to see her come on and take on this like thing and uh it was just like really i don't know she's such an incredible actor and to see a you know, a, a, a young girl evolve into this like woman who became the female lead of our show was so awesome to watch. Like it's oh, that, wow. and it, that's what's cool about again going back to what you know what Katrina was saying earlier, and, and the women on our on our show and in this Arrowverse, you know, we're so fortunate because they've cast really incredible actors, but also individuals, not just women. The men are incredible actors and individuals as well. Yeah. <laughs> really, uh, I don't know if that answer. <laughs> Thank you for letting me share. It's a great grin. I hope the screen just focused on your grin when he said that. Uh, Nancy says, "Question for uh, Laurel. I, I, which one was that? Uh, uh, Katie, uh, Laurel, our Laurel, or Earth Two Laurel? Which is more fun to play?" Oh, Earth 2 Laurel. <laughs> oh, and it's always fun to play. Uh, well, bad guy who sort of is learning what it's like to be a hero. Mm -hmm. um, but they both, I mean, I, I'm just very fortunate to have had such a, like, a playground and different arcs and levels to play with. So We have... We have people watching us from Illinois, New York City, California, Wisconsin, Australia, England, and Columbia. Oh, yeah. that's very cool. That's wild. That's wild. Uh, Trevor writes, question for all. Who is your favorite DC character and why? And he, she, he doesn't say, but can you say yourself? I, I, I don't know. Is that, is that allowed? Sure. <laughs> character anybody have a favorite dc character ben help me out here batman uh oh batman there you go. i just batman. said not my genre um <laughs> DC. uh i'm a wolverine fan i like the claws there you go. it's more for the aesthetics <laughs> yeah speaking of aesthetics so batman's dc right, right? Yes, yeah. Batman's DC, okay, Wolverine's so Marvel, with, but go that's with, okay. I'm going to go with Catwoman. I'm going to go with Catwoman. Nice. Thank you. That's Katie. Thank you. Nice. I like Catwoman. She's Cat. hot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to see Zoe Kravitz play Catwoman. Yes. yes. Ooh, yes. Pfeiffer was dope. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer, I mean, yeah. unreal. Even Anne Hathaway was great, too, actually. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about that. Someone in the chat's going to say Halle Berry. Just, just Halle Berry was. Oh, like... Halle! It wasn't her fault. It wasn't her. Fault. <laughs> oh no, no, no! It wasn't her fault. <laughs> it was somebody's fault, but not hers. <laughs> in a better movie, she would have been great. <laughs> oh, Alicia Silverstone. Uh, back oh, girl. Oh, that woman. Was that woman. Not that woman. Yeah. Batgirl. Right? Oh, Batgirl. 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 That's right. She was awesome. I thought it was a compliment and I, I'm not asking, you know, 
we're not going to talk about uh, the Batwoman show, but when Ruby Rose said that she left the Batwoman show, social media went bananas and Arrow and the Canaries was trending on Twitter. Mm. It was not a it was not a an Arrow story. It was a Batwoman story. But it just goes to show you like social media has. Look, social media is the reason Zack Snyder is going to make the Justice League movie again. Okay. They're going to push for that thing. And you're going to get this huge fan base because I'm telling you, we've di- we've done 75 of these panels and we get we've gotten we've gotten so many questions from you guys just because of the connection to Arrow. And it's just the fan fervor is just fantastic. That was mm-hmm. a lot of Fs. I yeah. love that. We have the best fans in the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool being all connected. Uh, Gaia tree. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, for everyone. Uh, if you guys could have added a character from the DC Arrowverse in your show, who would you want to add? Batman. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about adding Batman a bunch. We wanted it, especially Steven. We wanted Bruce so Wayne we. in the show so badly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been amazing. Or the joke. Nobody likes Robin. Nobody yeah, likes question. Robin. I mean, we like him. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with him. <laughs> Here's Alfred. <laughs> I would love to have Alfred in our show. <laughs> yeah. We also talked about having the Joker. Ooh. And he can get written into a script at one point. Oh, that's wild. What did you say, Katie? As a female version. As a female version. Oh, would be oh, 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 cool. I think they should that's do that's a great a idea. Movie with a female. I would probably yeah. make crazy. You would make an amazing Joker. <laughs> wow, that's actually really. I love that idea. I'll be. Is that your I'll, script? I'll Is that what you're working on, Katie? <laughs> 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 I would like to get it. Either a mixture between Beetlejuice and the Joker. <laughs> yes. <Ooh. laughs> uh, Stacy writes and says, my nine-year-old daughter would get upset if I watched episodes ahead of her. She actually wants me to ask right now, if you got to play a different character, which one would it be? Katrina. Right. Don't I say would Batman. Love, I would love to pay, play... Um, I would love to have Katie Cassidy's arc, actually. I yeah. think like I, right? think I think you got to go on such an epic journey with your character from where you started, all the dips and valleys, and then where you ended up. And you want to talk about just having like your hand in every pot and being able to do everything. Like that's a character that you don't get tired of or get bored of watching or playing because there's just so many that's of the facets of the personality coming out and it's just so much fun because script to script you never know what you're going to get and yeah. that's a fun mm-hmm. character so i i would personally have loved to have played Kate. and Cass. really you get to be two people you get yeah. to play two characters 18, 18 people <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure the writers i mean i'm they wrote very well for me i was never bored you know <laughs> needed a few shrinks just <laughs> <laughs> Juliana, what about you? Um, that's a really tough question. I would have liked to play Diggle. <laughs> I think that could nice. be. Sweet. Uh, I like his vibe. Like I like his arc. I like at the end the little uh, the uh, Green Lantern reference. Uh, <laughs> you know, and and I just like I don't know. He always sort of plays this grounding presence. He starts off as didn't he, he starts off as a driver, right? Mm-hmm. And then he turns into this like incredible hero and he just, I don't know. I, I love his vibe. I love his character. I like how he's written. I think he's a very noble character and the I like two, how he ends at the end. The two Diggle moments that you think of is one when the flash takes him for a ride the first time and he wants to oh, throw up. He pukes. <laughs> That's hysterical. And when uh, John Wesley ship says, uh, says John, I, ha- I don't recognize you without your ring. And the fans went bananas. Oh. <laughs> the fans went bananas. That was crazy. Uh, all right. Uh, Frank writes and says, uh, question for all. What are you all doing during the pandemic? Katie's writing a pilot. What about you all? I'm writing a lot also, which I've always done. I have... Um, 
two movies that I've written that are like in different stages of development. And I'm also tie dyeing a lot, which is <gasps> I tie. Did this you make is my that? Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? I got overly excited about my side. It's so dye. good. It's a beautiful Thanks. color. Thank you very much. Oh my, my sister God. kind of has like a, a I, I'm up at the cottage with my family right now. My sister has, um, is starting a little amateur business. So she's beading a lot. So she made me this bracelet with my dog's name on it. Oh. And, um, and yeah, she's letting me, um, tie dye as well. So that's, that's what I'm up to. That shirt is beautiful. Thanks Jules. <laughs> Don't you oh. think Ben should make you all stuff? Yeah. I would happily. There you go. Yes. I, I want to be next. Please. Okay. Be next <laughs> size small. Got we'll it. take so, four. <laughs> Katie, Katie's cat is <laughs> the oh, absolute that was? MVP ben, of this panel. Ben, you can hook up with Kelly because the t-shirt that she's wearing right now is, it's for charity, right? It's from my line. It's from yes. my line. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys, nice. um, I'm doing, I'm doing these, uh, these shirts. Uh, I literally, you guys, I just finished yesterday the shop on the head so Yay! i could launch it today hello Congratulations. And, um, and and everyone can get a 15 percent discount with the wizard con 15 uh discount and the the the, the store is called 33 edge so 33 edge i literally had this name for i think almost 20 years and um, been trying to launch something, some kind of clothing line. And this quarantine time has been perfect time because it's the only time that I've had time to do it. And mm -hmm. um, and so I literally finished the store last night so I wow. could have it wow. today. So yes, yeah, speaking of shirts, thank you, Katrina. Yay. <laughs> I sent her an email asking her like what she thought of it. I so thought yes, I sent all you guys one too. Yeah, huh? for sure. You, so you yeah, it's all about like you should equality, hire Ben unity. to make tie dye things. Sorry, you should get Ben to do tie dye things. Yes. I'm a veil. Tie dye things, yes, I, sure. I'm a veil. Yeah. Community store, community mm -hmm. store. It'll be the Arrow Community Store. <laughs> what is what is Thirty Three Edge? What is the significance of the name? So Thirty Three. It was originally going to be like a a workout or yoga line, and mm -hmm. Thirty Three has so many. The number is such a powerful number in numerology. It shows up in in the Bible, every religion. Um, and the reason why I sort of attached myself to it was because there's this island in north uh, of the Hawaiian chain of the of the main islands. It's one of these islands where only um, Hawaiians could row out to. Nobody actually could live there. It's not inhabitable, but they used to row out to it for their ceremonies and do like religious ceremonies and things like that. And um, and there's 33 ki'i or tiki gods like around the island. And then there's like this hole that if, at the certain time of the day that you look into, the Hawaiian symbol for 33 appears. So it just, it spoke oh. to me. So in such a way, I was like 33, that's such a powerful number. And then I was told in numerology that like, you know, 33 is my number, uh, my number is three and super powerful if you make it 33. So yeah, so there were just so many things and I just like the sound of it. it just sounds yeah, like a powerful great. number. Cool. Thank you. Congrats. Um, can I just Thank you so much. I'm so freaking proud of you. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Can I, can you send me the information on how to get all of the things? Yes, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you guys shirts for sure. Yay. It's at 33edge.com. Uh, and so there's like equality shirts and unity shirts. I love that. So the fact that I'm 33 years old is a good thing. Yeah. Oh, nice. Huh? Wow. <laughs> I could be your mother. That's really why it is called 33. <laughs> and she made up the old numerology thing. She just didn't want to tell you. It was all for you, Katie. All for you. <laughs> Amazing. Good. Like, congratulations. That's awesome. Thank, Thank you. So and I'm also writing a treatment. Uh, I finished a treatment and I'm getting it developed. Um, based on my life growing up in Hawaii and uh, running in a pageant. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. Awesome. So busy, busy quarantine. And I'm, I'm baking tons of banana bread oh, and God. growing sprouts and microgreens and herbs and making kombucha. I mean. It's nice to have the time to like, you know, rediscover creative, different creative outlets, you know? Cause like we all have them. We just don't necessarily always have the time to explore. Them. And I, 
I've also built up my tolerance for alcohol. I've done that. Quite <laughs> <a bit. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew it was bad the other day when I was like taking a hand. You guys saw me taking my vitamins earlier. Um, I, I, I took a, vi- a, a handful of vitamins with my margarita and I was like, <laughs> this might not be right. Yeah, I don't know about this. I just need your hardcore. <laughs> no. well, you I literally did not drink for 20 years, you guys. 20 years, no wow. drinking. And then all of a sudden I realized, wait. I'm not allergic to alcohol. I'm just allergic to shitty alcohol. You know, because all through my 20s, I could only afford the shitty stuff. So I was told we could swear. (laughs) Ben swore first. You're good. That's right. He he ruined it for everybody. All right. uh, We're we're coming out at the the end here. So I want to give you all an opportunity to just send a message to the fans of the show and fans of the panel and just people who have stuck in from all over and whatever their situations are. So let's just go around the room and, and, and just, you know, whatever you want to say to anybody, promote something or whatever it is. Uh, Kelly, let's start with you. Well, I kind of did all my promotion. I don't know all right, that thanks. I let's can go to shamelessly plug no. anything else. <laughs> but huge thank you to all the fans. Huge mahalo for everybody for all these years. I mean, I was on like like episode two. And um, and it's been such a great ride. It's I, I, I feel like this is going to go on forever. Mm. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Awesome. Juliana? I just want to thank you guys so much for being the most incredible, loyal, loving fans. You have lifted us all up so much just by being you and showing your love and and kindness for all of these years. And even though the show is over, it has not faded or diminished at all. And I get so excited. I know we all get so excited to come in and do events like this where we can, where we can uh, just spend time with you. And I hope that all of you guys are healthy and safe and yes, please be safe outside and, uh, and just protect yourselves. This is a crazy time, but just remember that we're all in it together and we're all with you. Katie, are you muted? I can't hear you. We can't hear you, Katie. <laughs> no, we can't. Yeah, she we was, can't hear she you. Was, I thought she was mouthing something like telling you what to say. I know. Something. I thought I was supposed to say like no? coaching you. There you, yeah, are. Now, there you yeah, are. Now we can. There you are. How long has that been going on? <laughs> we don't now. know, but why don't you say goodbye before it goes again? Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, Jules, everything you said, thank you guys so much. You've been the most incredible loyal fans. Um, obviously, we wouldn't be here without you. I hope that everybody, please, 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 please continue to wear masks and stay safe. Stay safe. We all want to, you know, get through this together and this more responsible and safe we are, the quicker it will pass. Um, so please stay safe and we just appreciate you and thank you and bless you. And yeah. Awesome. Right, awesome. Great stuff. Ben. Yeah. Everybody just uh, keep taking care of yourselves. I mean, I feel like yeah, I'm such a late breaking part of the whole arrow phenomenon. But, uh, you know, the fans have always made me feel so embraced and never like an interloper and uh, I so appreciate all of you. I, I, uh, yeah, just continue to take care of yourselves. Be safe. And last, but certainly not least the great Katrina. Oh, wait, I just need to point out somebody keep talking for a second, but look how sexy those ladies look with their mask on. They Hello. Oh, oh makes your eyes pop, honey. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Katie, that's dope. Oh, that's so cute. Kat. How cute are you? This is what I've been doing during my quarantine. Um, I've been making You've masks. Been making masks? Because what else oh, are you going to do? Because oh, if you got to wear a mask, awesome. you might as well look cute. It's so <laughs> cute. Katie, that is amazing. Also, I, I, my mask. <laughs> I can tell you, uh, without masks, uh, Mickey Dolan's will come up on Sunday. Uh, then the Vampire Diaries universe, also the Nanny, Lego Masters are all coming up here at Wizard World Virtual next week. For Katrina Law, Kelly Who, Juliana Harkavy, Ben Lewis, Katie Cassidy, I'm Seth Everett from the Hall of Justice podcast. Thank you so much for coming on to Wizard World Virtual. We will see you next time. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Oh, and don't forget, and don't forget the personalized experiences. Go to wizardworldvirtual.com.
Yeah. <laughs> Katrina will dance for you. <laughs> I'll do that specifically. <laughs> Hey, this is Alex Malari Jr. and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Your emperor commands it. Thanks for watching.